very carefully. Dreaming divine dreams. Dreaming divine dreams. Or if you like, you can say encountering God in your dreams. Dreaming divine dreams. That takes us into some scriptures very quickly. In Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. I read verse 6. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. This is a prophetic message. And it's good for you to listen carefully. It may save your life one day. I may save you from trouble one day. Numbers 12, 6. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And will speak unto him in where? In a dream. God can speak to you in a dream. So I will make myself known unto him in a vision and I will speak unto him in a dream. Therefore, it's possible for the Almighty to communicate with you in your dreams. And what a wonderful experience it is when the Almighty speaks to you in your dreams. And you know, God is not a talkative. God does not waste words. He means what he says, and he says what he means. Let's look at one man in the Bible called Jacob. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob was in a mess. If you are looking for somebody who was a mess in scripture, Jacob was number one. He ran away from home because of fear of being killed. He ran to a man called Laban. If Jacob was a 419, Laban was a worse 419. That man dealt with Jacob, changed his salary ten times, gave him the wrong wife. And Jacob had to run away. His life was confused. It was at that level he had a dream. There is somebody here this morning who needs to have a dream that will change your life. Amen. If you are that person, let me hear you shout a loud amen. amen. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. That is, if somebody's life is in a mess... God can come to you in your dream with a solution. Genesis 28 verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Aaron. He lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set. He took of the stones of that place. And put them for his pillows. And laid down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed... And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. Who stood above the ladder? The Lord. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou lies to thee will I give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread above, abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. There you find his future, his destiny being read out to him by the Almighty in a dream. I pray that there will be somebody here today. You will have your Jacob's dream. You will have your Jacob's dream. In the name of Jesus. He said, And behold, I'm with thee, and keep thee in all places whither thou goest. 
I will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And knew it not. If you look at the back of this place, that's what is written there. Surely the Lord is in this place. If you go to the prayer city, you find this picture that was put there by Mommy Gio of angels climbing up and down. That dream of the, that ladder, angels coming up and down, it was a dream. Jacob had the dream that changed his life forever. You will have a dream that will change your life forever. Let your amen be loud and clear. Was that the only man in scripture that had a dream that changed his life? No, the most popular dreamer was Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37, I read from verse 4. Genesis 37, verse 4. Are we there? And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream and told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. The problem of Joseph was that he could not keep his mouth shut. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were biding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Yet Joseph did not keep quiet. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. I said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. His father understood the dream. So his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. Joseph had dreams that showed him his future. He saw his future. And that dream guided all his journeys. When his brethren threw him into the pit, he said, well, this is not where I'm supposed to be. He had a dream that showed him his future. I decree that you shall have your Joseph's dream. So you can see from these passages that the Almighty communicates to us through dreams. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Matthew 1, 20. In Matthew 1, 20, we read, But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, where? In a dream. And said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You can see what is happening here. In the same Matthew chapter 2 that we read this morning, verse 19. Matthew 2, 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph in Egypt. Jesus was taken to Egypt because of a dream. It's good to know that the first time Jesus will leave the land of Israel, the place he went to was Africa. But that's not all. In the book of Acts of Apostles, something had happened on the day of Pentecost. And in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 17, Acts 2, 17. 
And let's read it from 16. But this is that which was spoken by Prophet Joel. And shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So the Bible also makes us to understand that there will be Holy Ghost inspired dreams. And if you begin to have Holy Ghost inspired dreams, there is no way you will not overshadow your contemporaries. If you begin to de- communicate with God in your dreams, when you wake up, you, your ideas will be different from others. There is Holy Ghost inspired dreams. The Bible says you shall dream dreams. By the time a person is 60 years old, he will have slept for 20 years. One third of our lives is spent sleeping. Dreams are visions during sleep. And it's a tragedy to abandon what occupies one third of our lives. A dream is a revelation to man of a portion of the activities of the spirit realm. Is a spiritual monitor telling you what is going on in your life in the spirit realm. I can officially tell you that 99% of the revelation knowledge you need to overcome your problems can be received in a dream. God can reveal everything to you in a dream. And you know they say knowledge is power. To be informed is to be transformed. As you have knowledge, you begin to recover. Dreams are a means of revelation. And it's a central way God has chosen to be communicating with us. Through dreams, God can convey to you the plan of your destiny. God can convey to you the destiny of your family, of your nation, of your world, of your career, of whatever you are doing can be communicated to you in the dream. Just like these men we've read here. In these last days, Dreams are part of prophetic outpouring of God's power upon his people. I have a word from the Lord to those of you who are gathered into this meeting today. That your Joseph's dream must come to pass. The dream of Joseph took him from the prison to the palace. Every man who wants uncommon success must have his own personal Joseph's dream. Any man who is in a mess and is in trouble, he needs to have a Jacob's dream. Any man who wants some common success must have his own personal Joseph's dream. Your Joseph's dream allows you to see your future. Your Joseph's dream is the heavenly picture about your life shown to you. Your Joseph's dream is the awareness of what you are supposed to be but you are not. Your Joseph's dream is a video film of your correct life as recorded in heaven. Your Joseph's dream is the divine goal planted into your spirit. Your Joseph's dream is your divine destination on this earth. Your Joseph's dream is the mountain top from which you can see your destiny from afar. Do you have problems with your marriage? Do you have problems with your career? Do you have problems with what you are doing? You need a Joseph's dream so that you can know what to do. Your Joseph's dream is the heavenly picture about your life shown to you. Your Joseph's dream is the light you can use to see your way when you are in a valley of difficulty. A sister prayed one day. He had a dream. And God brought a two-year-old son. A two-year-old boy. God brought the boy in the dream. Then in that dream, she saw the boy when the boy would be 20 years old. So two boys, one two years old, one 20 years old. Both of them side by side. And the Lord said, you see him, he's two years old now. When he's 20, he's going to get involved in what he should not get involved in and he will become like this. But if you don't want him to become like this when he's 20, there is a friend who comes to look for him in this house. Stop that friend from coming. She got that revelation from 
a dream. As I'm talking to you now, that friend that the mother stopped from coming to see her son was shot at Babbage for arm robbery. So if they had continued moving together, maybe he too would have been shot at the same time. I pray that this morning you will have your Joseph's dream. Your Joseph's dream is the embodiment of your destiny. You need your Joseph's dream, beloved. Because there are treasures in the marketplace of your life which you must discover. In the last days, God's people shall dream divine dreams. And you must key your way into this. The Lord whom we serve, according to the Bible, shall suddenly come to his temple. All of a sudden, I decree that you will have a dream that will move you forward. In the name of Jesus. Shout the amen loud and clear. I was sharing this somewhere a long time ago. When I was in the university, we had a course called Organic Chemistry. Very difficult course that time. And unlike these days, they test everything you've learned once a year. The Organic Chemistry course was in two big notebooks. One notebook one, notebook two. The notebook one was very full this higher education notebook. Notebook two was about half filled. And we're going to face the examination. Then, before the examination, I had a dream. This person, white garment, must be an angel of the Lord. He brought the two notebooks to me. He kept not- notebook one at the back and gave me notebook two alone. And I forgot about the dream. A few days of the examination, we were listening to lectures and someone had stolen my notebook one. There was nothing to read for the examination again. I panicked. I ran to Mr. the first person. Can I have your notebook? He said, no. Can I make a photocopy of yours? He said, no. So I went home dejected. I had only notebook two, which is half filled. And the exam was going to cover the two notebooks. So that night, I took only my half a notebook and began to, I prayed and began to read. And then the Lord reminded me, do you remember your dream? I said, yes. It's okay. So I read only notebook two. I went to the examination hall. When I got to the examination hall that morning, and they gave us a question papers, there was not a single question from notebook one that was told in. All the questions were from the notebook two, which is just half the size of the big one. At that level, I began to feel sorry for the man that stole my book. Because I knew he would have spent the whole night reading it. A dream can chart your way, guide your steps, and give you information. We're going to pray now. I'm going to continue this message next week. To now give you steps by which you may have a divine dream. Rise up on your feet now. I want you to pray these prayers with boiling anger and with merciless violence. It is the will of God for us to dream the dreams that will move us forward. But it is the agenda of the enemy that we should not have such dreams. Instead of divine dreams, some people have nightmares. Instead of the dreams that will move some people forward, the kind of dreams they have is dreams that will move them backward. Every dream has a message. There is no dream that doesn't say something. You will close your eyes like fire and like thunder. If you are here today and you are not a friend of God, you need to become a friend of God so that he can appear in your dream. If you are a friend of the devil, that is the person that will be appearing in your dream. If you are the friend of iniquity and sin and vices, those are the things you'll be seeing in your dream. You will pray this with merciless violence. Enemies of my Joseph's dream. The dream of Joseph moved him from the prison to the palace. Can you shout it loud and clear? Make it louder than that. Shout it louder than that. Die! In the name of Jesus. 
Pray against the enemy of your Joseph's dream. Yes. Aha, aha, aha. Maseta kaya bo shendera bakanta. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want you to pray this prayer with violent faith. Believing God that something must happen to you today. Dreams that will change my life. Manifest. Can you shout it loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. Maseta kaya bo shendera bakanta. Jesus name we pray shout this louder than anyone here dreams of poverty Dreams in the name of Jesus aha 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 spirit of the living God move Move, 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 move. Aha, 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 aha. Makota kapo soponda kayaba. Ribo soponda kayabo shente. Beni katende ka. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout this again loud and clear. Every dream of destiny failure. Death in the name of Jesus. Ah, ah, ah. Yes. 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 Continue. Continue. Spirit of death and hell. Loose your hood. 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 Basikate ya boshende rabokonta. Rabokola boko tende ke ya bo shente ya ba. Makaponde ke se tele ke ya bo. Dere ke se pende ke ya bo shente ya bo kola ba. Marre bo se pende ke ntia. Makapola ke ya bo shente ya bo. De se pinda kantinda. Tonight is tonight. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. As many people as are here today, and something is telling you that you are not living the kind of life you are supposed to live. Can you shout this and pray it louder than anyone here? All my virtues stolen in the dream. I recover you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Recover the virtues, recover the virtues. Pata, pada, kapada. Recover them, recover them.
Ahá, ahá. Spirit of the living God. Move. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Something strange is happening over there. Very, very strange. An old woman is coming out of the body of a very young lady. This has introduced a thread to your life. All the persons who want to marry you, they all run away because of this person inside your body. Yes, that's the power of God is coming upon you. Yes. Say this again loud and clear. Every operation. operation. (laughs) Can you say that loud and clear? Make it louder than that. Of the motion in my dreams. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's lay our right hand on our heads. And we declare this loud and clear before we go. My Father, father. connect my head to my miracle. In the name of Jesus. Put your mouth and begin to ask for that connection. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a connection. Let there be a connection. In Jesus name we pray. You may remove your hand from your head. You now pray these closing prayers. Every dream that has brought me down. I cancel you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Cancel it. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship. We have five to seven minutes to pray these prayers. They are what you can call dangerous prayers. Prayers that are dangerous to the enemies of our lives. These prayers are going to be prayed now because there is somebody here whose miracle can no longer wait. Who wants the miracles now? So pray this with boiling anger and pray like a man or woman from another world. Immediately we begin to pray these prayers. The power of God will begin to pop out from person to person and and go from person to person. Give this command to the ground now. Oh ground! Open up. Can you shout that with a tone of unity? Is that the best you can put into this one? Swallow every enchanter. Signed against me. Can I hear you shouting that loud and clear? There is a woman there at the back who needs to pray with, with only anger because this is what you experienced this very last night. 
Can I hear everybody shouting it again loud and clear? Uh huh. When you say that three times, you now convert it to machine gun playing. Ground! Swallow them! Ground! Swallow them. Are you ready now? Open your mouth and begin to pray. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh yes, sir. Oh that masetakai aboshanta. In the name of Jesus. Yes, continue. Deal with the enchanters. Jesus name we pray that is number one there are some people here this morning some marks used to appear on your body and it will mysteriously disappear again right there where you are the hand of God is coming upon you and the yoke of the evil mark is broken completely you mark of hatred assigned against that sister over there Right there where she is. Let the blood of Jesus begin to wipe away all the mark of hatred. In the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So every power divining against my destiny Can you say this loud and clear? You are a liar! Yeah! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and declare this one. Something must happen in your life here this morning. Bosente Yakaya Boshende Rabokopola Baraba. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are here this morning and you can remember clearly that within the last few months, somebody actually came and told you physically. That it will destroy you. You remember. It says it will destroy you. Or she says you you will destroy you. You remember clearly. Just quietly find a way to this altar now. To remember that is it. Within the last few months, just find a way to the altar. Be on your knees. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Those of you at the front, make sure that your voice is louder than that of anybody here. Say any power, any power calling for me before a dark mirror. Can you shout this loud and clear? Die with your mirror in the name of Jesus. Now start. Try the power to die with the mirror. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. That's why you are here. Like the arrow of destruction. Go back to the senders now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, them we pray. Those of you at the front here, shake your head vigorously. Let the arrow of the spirit of death and destruction that has been assigned against you go back to wherever it's coming from. That's right. Don't worry about the headache. Check that headache. It must go. Their arrows must go back to where it's coming from. 
Aha. So you shall not die but live to declare the works of God. Let the arrows begin to go back to the ascenders now. Yes, be released, be released from the grip of every darkness. Be released now in the name of Jesus. Father, let the blood of Jesus be a covering around your children here. Let the circle of the blood of Jesus be drawn around you. And every threat of the enemy against you, let the threat be silenced now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody will shout this again loud and clear. Pharaoh of my father's arm. Go back to the Red Sea. Can you say that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that I want you. Deal with the Pharaoh. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise a right hand to the evilest. Say, messenger of affliction and frustration. Messenger of affliction and frustration. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus, deal with the message of affliction and frustration. I refuse to be afflicted. I refuse to be frustrated. That's right. Deal with the messengers of affliction and frustration. Shout a loud amen. A louder amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, we are gathered before you here this morning. Specially open our understanding. Specially visit us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Last Sunday we begin to look at dreaming divine dreams. Or that if you like, you can say encountering God in your dreams. And we read Genesis 28 that day. We read Genesis 37 too. We read the book of Matthew as well. And also we read from the Acts of Apostles. Pointing out about the implication of having God in our dreams. Again, we go to Genesis 28 this morning in order to conclude this message. Genesis 28 again, I read from verse 10. Genesis 28, 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Aram. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Behold, the sun was set, and he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in the place to sleep. And a dream, and behold, a ladder set up on earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And in verse 13, in his dream, the Lord appeared. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. Land wherein thou lies to thee will I give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt widespread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All this in a dream. 
And behold, I'm with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither self thou goest. And will bring thee again unto this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awake out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. I pray this morning that the dream that will move you from where you are to where God wants you to be shall manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. It shall manifest in the name of Jesus. You need a Jacob's dream when you are confused. You need a Jacob's dream when the enemies are arrayed against you. You need a Jacob's dream when you don't even know which way to follow again. You need a Jacob's dream when you know that household wickedness are all around you. You need a Jacob's dream when people are cheating you and are taking things that belong to you. You need a Jacob's dream when you know you are a king but you know you don't have a crown and you don't have a palace. You need a Jacob's dream when you notice that where you are is not where you are supposed to be. You need a Jacob's dream when you lack information from heaven about your destiny. You need a Jacob's dream when the future looks very bleak. You need a Jacob's dream when going forward is a problem. Going back to where you came from, another problem. Every man who will win in the warfare of life, you need what we call a Jacob's dream. I decree that your Jacob's dream shall manifest. It 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 shall manifest. In the name of Jesus. How wonderful will it be if all of a sudden you have a dream and God says, Son, tomorrow go to this place, go to that place, do this, do that, do that, and you will never be poor again all your life. That's why the Jacob's dream is needed. Right from the time Jacob had that dream, his life was no longer the same. There are dreams you can have that will change your life forever. That's why I'm praying for somebody here this morning. All those negative dreams that are drawing you down, I bury them now. Now! Now! In the name of Jesus! Then there is something called the Joseph's dream. Every man who wants uncommon success must have his own personal Joseph's dream. And like we said last week, your Joseph's dream allows you to see into your future. Your Joseph's dream is the heavenly picture about your life. Your Joseph's dream is awareness of what you ought to be, but you are not. Your Joseph's dream is the video film of your correct life as revealed in heaven. Your Joseph's dream is that lamp you will use to pass through the valley of the shadow of difficulty. Your Joseph's dream is what will identify for you the treasures that are in your marketplace. The tragedy of life is for somebody to be a treasure and then he's going to look for a treasure. Why he himself is a treasure. He himself is a treasure but he's looking for it outside. One day, a poor God-fearing Jew living in a particular city, he had a dream that at the base of a bridge leading to the king's palace, that there is, there is a treasure buried there which will remove his poverty. He had it. it was a dream. So he had that dream. So he stood up, traveled far to that place. But when he got close, he found that the place was heavily guarded by soldiers. So he didn't know what to do. He was pacing up and down, roaming around, waiting for the time the soldiers would no longer be there so that he would dig the place and get his uh, treasure. It was coming every day. Then for two weeks, it was going up and down. Then one day, one of the soldiers recognized him and arrested him. So you must be a spy. For the last two weeks, you have been roaming around there. What are you looking for? The man said, I had a dream that the treasure that will promote my life is buried here. But because you people are always guarding this place, I cannot even dig to look for it. He thought the soldier was going to beat him up and then arrest him and go and lock him up somewhere. The soldier laughed at him. The soldier laughed uncontrollably. And I said, the soldier I said, that's very interesting. Because I too had a dream about two weeks ago. 
that a Jewish man found a treasure inside his roof. So that's Tonya, you are a Jew. So, but you see, you can't dig anywhere here, you understand? He released him to go away. When the Jewish man got home, he now went to his roof and there was a treasure that wiped off all his property. So he had to go to that location to get the information. He had his own Joseph's dream. A man found himself in heaven in a dream. And he met an angel of God conducting him all over the place. And after some time, he saw one man coming. In comfortable, anointed, refreshed, wealthy. He was coming along. And as man was coming along, this is what I asked the angel. Who is this man? The angel said, that's you. The correct you. The one that's supposed to be in existence now. So, if you compare yourself to that correct you, you are now approximately 23 and a half years behind. So, that is the real you. And the dream cleared. So, for the first time in his life, he found that instead of killing lions, instead of killing tigers, he was killing mosquitoes. Somebody here will have his or her own Joseph's dream. And I decree that whether the devil likes it or not, whether it's convenient for the enemy or not, you will dream your Joseph's dream. I command your Joseph's dream to manifest. Let it manifest, let it manifest, let it manifest. Let it manifest in the name of Jesus. There are basically six kinds of dreams. Number one, there are dreams that add to you. Your dreaming them improves your lot. Number two, there are dreams that subtract from you. Dreaming them meaning that it will diminish you. I pray that such dreams shall die. <laughs> then three, there are dreams that leave you the way they found you. They are not moving you forward, they are not moving you backward, they are just there. Number four, there are dreams that empty you. They will empty the person completely. Empty the person completely. A boy, 25 in the US, United States of America, said he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw himself getting married to the caterer of his school. And there is no problem in seeing a caterer, you are marrying a caterer in your dream, but the problem is that this boy is 23 or so, the caterer is 66. And as the devil were arranging it, that day he went to the cafeteria, and the woman gave him free food, was laughing at him. So he concluded, it must be correct. That was a boy of 23. Now begins to live with a woman of 66 as a wife. And they got married. Boy, a Nigerian. Woman, German. This is not a story. The boy came. I was weeping. I was talking to me. Said after living with this woman for a while, he began to discover this is not an ordinary woman. Said because all of a sudden in the night, she will, something will lift her up from the bed like this. He too will be lying on the bed and see the woman lifted up. And all of a sudden she will come down again. And she said, when she comes down like that to the bed, she becomes stronger than a 20-year-old girl. So fear gripped his heart. He couldn't tell his parents in Nigeria. He was getting leaner and leaner. Then somebody sent him a copy of prayer in. He began to pray the aggressive prayer of the psalmist. So, one night again, the woman was lifted up. Then he now prayed one of the prayers he learned from the prayer of the psalmist. Let his habitation become desolate. The woman landed on the bed. Bwah! And she got angry. And she said, get out of here. And that night, he threw the boy out. And from that day, his problem started. He will wear a suit. And he will be telling you that he's wearing a shirt. He will wear black shoes. He will be convinced you that the shoes are white. 
He was in that confused state. He came to one of our crusades. Everything started from the dream that he had. Can you raise up your right hand? With the voice of a soldier and with a tone of finality. Say, dreams! Designed to empty my life. I bury you now! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and declare it. Yes. Pata Sendeke Yaba. In Jesus' name we pray. The fifth kind of dream it dreams that catapult your destiny to catapult your destiny and many men have had this kind of beautiful dreams that they are, after that dream their lives no longer remain the same and six there are dreams that waste you dreams that waste but whatever the dreams are the best kind of dreams are dreams that add to you and dreams that catapult your destiny. And once God appears in your dreams, you become a champion. All dreams have messages and we have to know the messages they are giving us so that we can receive the kind of guidance we need. I come from a very poor home. And the house I was living before I traveled abroad is this kind of house that will face me, I face you as we are about 30 people living in that place. I you know in that kind of house, everybody comes with their own spirit to operate. In a dream, I saw somebody was weaving cobweb around my room, one of the tenants. So no problem. Then I got a scholarship to travel abroad. That dream had told me that there is a problem. So I got my passport, I got my visa, I got a ticket. I didn't tell anybody in the old house that I was traveling. For six months, everything was in my hand. Then on the day that I wanted to go, I took my box. I wore this uh, suit that I bought across the bridge at Ujuelegba. And I was on my way out. The tenant saw me. He said, Daniel, where are you going? So I'm traveling. So you want to go and greet your parents? So no. So I'm traveling abroad. To where? So United Kingdom. So, ah, did you just know about it today? I said no. I've known about it for a long time. Say, so, hey. So you don't want any of us to follow you to the airport? I said exactly. That's the idea. If they had followed me. They will have arranged the cobwebs around my leg. You get information that will move you forward. This is a very, very serious thing. And you must take it to heart. Also, when I went abroad to study, after two years or so of study, the white man who was supervising my project began to say, Daniel, go home, go home, go and get it. Take a holiday, go home. He said, just take one month. Go one month, then come back. Again, I got home that night. I had a dream. I saw myself at Mochala Mohammed Airport. And they called our flight to travel back abroad. And I stood up. By the time I rushed to where the plane was, it has left. <laughs> so by the next morning, I went back to the white man. I said, sir, I'm not going anywhere. So why? So okay, go for two weeks. I'm not going anywhere. I will stay here and work. Don't you like your parents? I say I like them, but I'm not going. Because I knew that if I went, I would never come back. And true, all the Nigerians who went home on holiday that time, by the time they came, a coup had taken place. And the airports were closed. That scattered all their travel plans, and many of them missed their examination and had to repeat the year. 
what delivered me was that dream. I pray that the dream that will deliver you will manifest in your life. This your amen is very weak. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I also pray one prayer for you now. That you will encounter the Almighty in your dream. I also pray another prayer for you now. That you will encounter the God of Elijah in your dream. You will encounter him. 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 In the name of Jesus. But why does God use dreams when he can use other means to speak to us? Why? Several reasons. Number one. Our minds get easily clouded with the business of the day. So during the day we can't hear much or see much. Number two. The only quiet time that some people have is when they sleep. In the morning, whether somebody is making noise over the microphone or speaker somewhere, or the newspaper vendors are shouting their own. So in that noise, you get to the bus stop. At the bus stop, plenty of noise. When you enter the bus again, noise will start. Somebody will start at the front. Nice. You get to work again. Nice. Come back. Nice. So the only quiet time for some people is when they sleep. The third reason is that when you are asleep, your conscious mind cannot fight God's message because you are now asleep. It's like somebody who is under anesthesia in the hospital. You can't fight the doctor anymore because if you are no less, you, are, you, can't, you have no power to fight. Four. When we are awake, our conscious mind gets in the way of hearing from God. It gets in the way, blocks. When we are awake, our conscious mind blocks the way of hearing from God. Five. When we are asleep, God is able to do things we cannot contest. We can't contest it. And six, when you are asleep, you lose control of your life and God has it. And the seventh reason why God comes to our dreams, you find it in the book of Job 33. Job 33, verse 14. Job 33, 14. This is a serious matter. Meaning that you may have an interview. And before you go, you've had a dream. All the questions have been explained to you by the Holy Ghost. Job 33, verse 14. For God speaketh once, yea twice. Yet man perceived not in a dream, in a vision of the night. When this sleep falleth upon men, he slumbers upon the bed. Then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. He sealed their instructions. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So you can see that according to this Job 33 from verse 14 to 18, God talks to us in our dreams to warn us. It was in a dream. Pharaoh knew that famine was coming to Egypt. And he had to call Joseph to explain the dream. God makes us to have dream to turn us from wrongdoing. Pilate's wife had a dream that they are bringing Jesus to her husband and she warned her husband, don't have a hand in this matter. Abimelech that went to take Abraham's wife, God warned him in the dream, you are a dead man, you better return his wife. Also in this passage, you can see that God talks to us in the dream to keep our life from the sword. God told Joseph, take the baby, go away, go to Egypt because they want to kill the baby. Was in a dream. And when Herod was dead, in a dream again, said, take the child back. Those who want the child dead are dead themselves. So it is, it is a principle of the Almighty that those 
who want to kill his people can die. Then this passage, we learn that you can have a dream to prevent, God can let you have a dream to prevent your life from hellfire. To prevent a man, look at verse 18, he kept back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the soul. How do you encounter God in your dream? How do you dream divine deep? How do you meet God in your dreams? The first key if you want a divine encounter in your dream, is to make God your friend. Meaning that you must live a pure life that God will be happy with. The life of quietly concealed sin, the life of masturbation, the life of lesbianism, the life of adultery, the life of lying, the life of toying with other people's destiny that some people live will not allow them to have a divine dream. If you are living a dirty life, you will always have dirty dreams. If your life is unclean, your dreams will be unclean. The Bible says, move near to me and I will move near to you. But if you move away, say, I will move further away and you are as close to God as you personally want to be. Make God your friend. The Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. The Bible says God does nothing, but he will first of all tell his servants, the prophets. Then two, ask God for a divine dream. Whosoever asks, receives. When you knock, the door shall be opened. Ask him. Three, deal with your thought life. Your thought life. Deal with your thought life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And finally, emulate the saints of old. The saints of old who had divine encounters. Emulate them. Like Paul. Forget those things that are behind you and press forward. Like Abraham. Trust in God completely. Like Enoch. Walk in daily fellowship with God. Like Moses. Choose to suffer than to enjoy the pleasure of sin. Like Daniel. Commune with God at all times. Like Isaiah. Consecrate yourself to the works of God. Like John. Learn to lean upon the bosom of the master. Like Stephen. Manifest a forgiving spirit to those who hurt you. Like all the heavenly hosts, form a habit of praising God no matter what your circumstances are. Then as you do this, God will be appearing in your dreams and you will become a divine dreamer. Dreamers are dangerous people. They have a way of changing our world. This morning, we're going to pray. And the first prayer we're going to pray is our prophetic prayers for the week. So you stand on your feet. Bring this out now. You make this confession loud and clear. Then pray these seven prayers with holy anger. Let's rise up on our feet now. And let's all confess this one loud and clear. Are we ready? Let's go. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ye all ye far countries. Get yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. Get yourself, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and you shall come to know. Pick the word, shall not stand, for God is with me. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray for the paper now. Seven powerful amen to those prayers. With violence in your spirit, man. Pray like somebody completely from another world. Pray these prayers for your life and for your destiny. Say, in my dreams. Oh God. Appear 
In the name of Jesus. That's right. As for his appearance. Appear! 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 Bosente kaya bo shende rabo kontanda rabo kontia. Appear! Them we pray. Say, so where is the Lord God of Elijah? Allah, appear in my dream. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God of Elijah, appear, 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 appear. appear. Jesus, them we pray. Say dreams of detention and demotion. Can you shout those two things loud and clear? Louder than that. Day in the name of Jesus. Pata Santa Kaya Boshanda Rabokonde Ribosaponde Kaya Boshanta Dreams of detention and devotion. Deal with them now, deal with them now. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. This next one is the most serious prayer we have to pray here today. And I want you to pray it until something happens. I believe God that as you pray this prayer from your heart, it shall be even as you have said. My Jacob's dream. My Joseph's dream. Can you shout those two things loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can shout it here this morning? Alex! Look at me! In the name of Jesus! Arise and look at me. My Jacob's dream, my Joseph's dream. Arise and look at me in the name of Jesus. Bo sende kaya bo shente rabo kopola bakariba sanda. Ria peli katende kaya bo shente raba. Aha. 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 Jesus, then we pray. A sevenfold amen to that prayer. Last prayer before you go home. Which craft appearance in my dreams? You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Deal with that appearance. Don't tolerate the appearance. Deal with it completely. Masekatoya boshendera bokompo.
de ribo se pende que ya boshente na boko panda kampa barika se pende que ya boshente e jesus them we pray silence now i have a word for some people here i don't know who these people are but these words are for you the lord said i should tell somebody here that your days of trials are over amen and that your days of testimony are started So I have a word for somebody here. The Lord said, as you tell you, that presently, the members of your family seem to be laughing at you. But very soon, they shall come and serve your God. Very soon, very soon. I have a third word for somebody. The Lord said, since this person was born, you have never really acquired your possession, let alone even losing them. When people are talking about possessing their possession, you never possess any possession. I have a word to you from heaven. That wow. not only that which you have lost, not only that which you didn't get, but even that which your ancestors have lost shall come back to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us share the grace in fellowship.